so one of the things I really enjoy about uh, teaching banjo, um, and I'm not a banjo teacher, I don't have any books to sell, I don't have courses to sell, this is, um, I'm a student, and the best way to learn is to teach. And one of the great things is when you actually get feedback and, and people are using the things you put online, and then you personally, maybe you got lazy and forgot those lessons you put online, uh, they ask a question about it, and then you go, man, I, I forgot how to do that, so I better go relearn how to do that so I can a answer a question. So um, that that happened uh, today. Uh, Karen, a friend of mine, um, she was working on through one of the videos I posted where I was talking about how to play uh, a melody up the neck using um, just the two-finger chords, and um, I used the G scale as an example. Well, um, as a as kind of a reminder, it's sort of uh, and the way I said you could figure out the placement for your fingers is to find the full chord shape and then just take apart the uh, the bottom two strings. Um, you can do that with any strings, but the idea is that it makes it easier when you're working up the neck that you can play. Uh, the two finger shaped chords rather than the full blown like uh, you know like G A minor G D C B minor C G when you play the full chord shape you, your fingers might get a little tied up and it's hard to switch really quickly so um, she asked a really great question which is that that's great and stuff but what about if i want to play in the key of c does that still work and the easy answer is absolutely it works in any key and in any mode um so the the problem is, is i was kind of lazy so uh where's my capo i'm gonna cheat here so what i would probably do if if i were cheating is oh i've got this song in in the key of c and I want to use all the same noodly bits that I was using in the key of G. So I would slap a capo on the fifth fret because when you do that, you're holding down the C bar chord, right? Now, um, when you do that, you can use all the same chord shapes that you use in the key of G. And, uh, that's great and stuff, but the neck only goes so far, and what if you want to play this part of the neck? So then you're stuck really learning the chords again. And this applies in, in any key, right? If I'm playing in the key of D, um, I could put the capo on the seventh fret, and so I can do the, the open G shape, the C shape, B minor shape, and then the C barred at the fifth shape. I say shape meaning relative to where the capo is. Um, again, really not helpful because you're running out of neck, so what do you do? Um, well, the fundamental idea stays the same. Um, the first step, and, and this, this applies to more than just playing two finger chords, it applies to playing anything up and down the neck. Um, the first step is if you're gonna play in the key of C, well, it, it helps to look up the chords. and uh, so as a, as a reminder, if, if uh, you don't got time to go do a quick Google search, um, the, in the key of C, it uh, starts with a C major, and then does a D minor, then an E minor, and an F, and a G, and then an A minor. And then there's a B diminished in there, but if you're playing a B diminished, then you're probably a lounge singer playing jazz music with a piano man, and um, you're you're out there teaching lessons. You don't need anything from me. So, frankly, I, I almost never use that seventh chord. Um, maybe I'll cheat and do a passing from the B to the C, but that's cheating because that's not really a B diminished. I imagine the diminished shape on a banjo is something like really weird shape that I don't know how to play, and uh, I've never seen a need for it with any of the songs I've done. So. Let's just pretend we talked about about it, but don't. So those those are diminished. So for for the sake of this conversation, when we play in the key of C, once again we're going to be playing C D minor, E minor, F major, 
G, A minor. And the cool thing about that is if you put all the chord shapes up the neck, then you're going to over all the chord shapes are going to overlap one another and eventually you're going to hit on every single note up the neck that is in the scale of C, including those diminished notes. They're in there somewhere. Um, it might be a stretch, but they're in there. So for the the sake of this conversation, we're trying to figure out where can we play some notes up the neck. Well, a really great exercise, regardless of what key you're in, is learn how to play those chords in all the different shapes up the neck. So you've got your, um, well, let's start with the open G shape. If I uh, strum down here, you know, that, that's G. G is in the, in the key of, uh, G is in the key of C. I can also do that up here at the 12th fret. Well, if I go down a whole step, F is also a bar shape, and so is C. So, so that's cool. Now I now I've got uh, all my bar shapes. Um, I can do. Um, you've got your C shape, but what is the C shape? The C shape is really a full D chord played back, right? So where can I use that D-shaped chord up the neck also? Well, I can play it right here on the 7th fret. And I can play it on the 9th fret. And then I can slide all the way an octave up. And let's see if I do it right. There we go. That's C again. Um, what else do we got? Uh, I just got the E minor shape, right? That's cool. But if I were to put a bar uh, past the neck, well, that really, that's... And then I slide that shape up. I got that A minor. That's cool. Um, what other chord do we have in this? We've got a D minor. Right. Um, I'm kind of skipping around here, but where else could I play a D minor? Well, I can play the D minor on the 7th fret. That's the same shape as an A minor that we were playing down here. So you only have so many shapes that you can use up and down the neck, and it's a matter of finding where those shapes fit within the chords, within the scale. So um, now a nice little exercise is just find, you know, occurrences of those chords up the neck. Well, we've got your C is right here, C is right here, C is right here. I'm using the F shape, and then C is right here again. Right, and then you got your D minor shape here. Now I'm gonna be honest; I don't have them all figured out, but I got enough of them figured out so I can get some mileage out of it. Got the D minor shape right here, but D minor shape is also right here. Right, and then uh, of course there's the F and F, but also F is right here. I can do the D shape. Now, you probably caught me doing the three-finger D shape because, frankly, I hate doing a four-finger D shape. It just, my fingers get tied up, so I will cheat and just do a partial chord. Now, the cool thing about that also is if, if you do an F and you want to go to G, well, do a full four-finger F chord, I can slide a whole step. That's two half steps, right? Well, the same thing is if I'm playing an F here and I go a whole step up, that's in there. If I play the F right here, right? So F to G, F to G, F to G. I'm just using the different shapes and then I'm going up a whole step. So. Right, so what am I doing there? I'm just finding a bunch of chords in the key of C and just working my way up the neck just to find out where my finger placements are. Right, so I've got that C shape. There's a D minor shape. There's an F shape. There's that G shape. There's the, the C. Well, that, that solves my two finger chord problem. So when I'm doing that, that's my C. And then if I go down a whole step, that's
that's actually just part of that D minor shape. But because I'm only playing the, the bottom two strings, and then I can go to my original C shape. I can go to the G. If I did the full G chord shape, I would realize C, G, G, F, C, G, D minor, C, G. Now I want to go back up the neck, right? Well, you remember when I had the capo on, you already figured out all those chord shapes. That was the uh, the C shape, or the, the C as a bar chord. And then we got that F chord that is effectively me putting a C down where that bar chord was. So right there you got that. F. And I can go up a whole step back to that G. And then here's some easy chords. You got your F, G, and then if I were to play that C chord 12 steps up, right, that's a C chord one octave up from See that, that little stretch right there, right? It's a... And that's what I mean by it's easier said than done, because at some point you've got to break down, do the math, figure out the chords, the chord shapes within the key, and then find out where those chords are laid down on the neck, and those are your hot spots where you want to be able to play. If you were just doing a little melody with... If you want to play like a guitar player with your guitar pick and, and work up the neck, well, well, those notes I just played were all found within the chord shapes, right? So I've got that G and the F and the C. So, um, my point is, is every time I need to figure out how to play up the neck, the first thing I'm going to do is figure out the chords within the scale, find the chord shapes, and then just start practicing them and kind of work it. Uh, that, that's the exercise. Um, once you learn it and it's in here, that's not enough because music is both the thinking of it and the exercising of it. The exercising requires muscle memory so that you're thinking less about it. You want to be instinctive about it. So um, I love chord shapes because, and I love playing off of chord shapes, because it's a lot easier to remember how to play a chord than it is to remember how to play a melody. Or, um, you know, you hear some folks say, hey, I, I've got to learn how to play some tabs, and, and that becomes really complicated, and there's a lot of math, and there's remembering every single note, and it's like, Ah, it's a whole lot easier if you just lump it together into chord shapes because the chords already contain three of those notes for you. So, and especially if you're playing some basic folk songs, you're probably going to be just playing that C, in this case, the, the C, the F, the G, and then the C. And that's your 1 4 5 chord. Your 1 4 5, as a reminder, is the 1 being the first chord in the scale. So, in this case, it's C, and then you go, you know, D, E, F, F is the fourth chord, and then G is the fifth. So you hear about that all the time. The one, four, five is your country chords. Every country song just uses those three chords, usually. Exceptions to everything, of course, so. Right? 
So I just played up the neck and all I played were C, F, G chords. I didn't pay attention to the D minor or the E minor or the A minor. And definitely not the B diminished, we're, we're hiding from that. But, uh, but yeah, even if just all you play are the one, four, five chords up the neck, you're probably gonna hit all the melody notes within the scale. So um, there's a reason the one, four, five chords are so popular and it's because it touches most of everything. Um, so yeah, uh, so you know, once again to bring it home, if, if the end result is you wanna play a nice little melody up the neck with two strings using a drop down technique, figure that out on your own with chord shapes. So, um, yeah, there you go. Hope that helps.